so far. We've learned that I'm perfectly willing to upload videos to YouTube of myself in the garage in my pajamas. And we've learned that there's no compression in the number four cylinder on this engine. So let's dive in and find out what's going on in there. So we still have our tappet shims in uh, all eight of these uh, valve tappet baskets. Uh, the baskets will pull right off, but I just want to grab these shims and if they don't have the measurement written on them, I'm going to record it, so I'll have to measure it uh, with a micrometer and, and then I'm going to record which position they were in because maybe, I doubt it, but maybe they all go back into the same spot uh, or at least some of them go back into the same spot. Uh, if you recall from a previous video, we did have some where the clearances were okay. If I end up not doing any valve work, uh, and I have a hard time believing I'd go this far in and not do the valve work, but let's be prepared for any um, alternative. And so I'm just going to measure these and make sure that I capture what size is in which position. I can always throw that data out, but uh, again, just gathering data is a good idea in life. Um, with it, you have the possibility of some kind of knowledge that's useful. Uh, without it, well, you definitely don't even have the possibility of that. Threw a little more light on this, and uh, so we'll start here at the intake on number one. There we go. This shim is a, uh, boy, there is little chance that you'll see that. It is 2.75, so it's two and three quarter millimeter. So number one intake, 275, and I record that in my book. I'm just going to go ahead and do all the rest and record them. Now I'm just going to go ahead and pull these buckets out. Just kind of grab them by the lip real carefully with a small pliers and pull them out. And I'm uh, just kind of inspecting these. I mean, these are a very hardened steel, um, but they have obviously been up and down in their in their um, buckets quite a few times. I'll check the uh, service manual and see if there is a um, service limit for the diameter on these things. But uh, I also want to make sure I try to put them back where they came from. So I'm just using a sharpie, and it's okay to write on this surface here. That that won't harm anything. Um, this is the uh, number one cylinder exhaust, so 1E and into the bag with the others, and I keep going and mark them all. There's the last one. Label it 4E. Number four cylinder exhaust. I uh, did check the service manual and there is not a specification for diameter on these buckets, but um, did find something interesting. So let's go over to the workbench. Okay, so here's my cams, and in my service manual, I do have a service limit uh, or, you know, a standard range in which these uh, cams, the diameter of the cam lobes, or that distance that it can turn and press that valve down, uh, there's limits to how much wear there can be there. So um, now's a good time to measure that and see if I've got cams that have any life left in them or if I'm going to be looking for new cams. And uh, so here are the, the specifications and I'll put a photo up of this. But essentially on the intake cam I need to be between 35.48 millimeters and 35.515. So somewhere around 35 and a half millimeters. The limit, the absolute lowest that that measurement can be, uh, measuring from here to here on each cam, so right across there, 
is 35.19 millimeters. And so I don't have a micrometer that'll go, that's over an inch, it's uh, a little over an inch and a quarter, so my micrometer is only one inch. But I do have a uh, pretty darn accurate uh, slide rule here, and I've checked it against some of those uh, valve shims, and it's nailing the number spot on. So, uh, you know, maybe not down to the thousandths of an inch like a micrometer, but close enough to see if I'm at least in this range. And so I go ahead, turn this on to millimeters, and this is my intake cam, and the first lobe that I came to, 34.81. Well, that's already below my limit. So this cam uh, I can't be using again. 35.01. That one is also below the limit. Um, I have measured the exhaust and uh, those are all near the service limit but within spec so I may may or may not use that cam again but I, I think I need to be going and looking for an intake cam on eBay so I'll be doing that. Um, so if you don't have one of these they're ten dollars they work uh, get one and what you don't want to do is just pull these cams out and assume that uh, they're fine and throw them back in. Um, now I may be able to find shims and I'm going to do the math on this. Perhaps I can find shims that are so thick that uh, I can make up that distance. But if I end up working the valves and uh, you know regrinding the seats to get a nice uh, good seal between the valve and the seat uh, that's going to take away some material on both of them or either and uh, raise that up even more. Uh, so, you know, in, in a sense, I may gain something there, but these service limits are written for a reason. But uh, more on that to come. I, I got to do some math. But get a slide rule, and uh, a micrometer isn't that expensive either. Um, good things to have in the shop. Okay, so I've given this a little bit more thought about the math on that uh, intake cam that's below the service limit spec. Um, I've got a chart of all of the available tappet shim sizes that uh, were available and their part numbers. I'll put that up here. And um, there are sizes of those shims that are available smaller. So as I um, move that valve up closer to the cam by resurfacing the valve seat and the valve itself so that that mates well, uh, that valve will be moving up closer to the cam and in order to allow the correct clearance I'm going to need to shrink the size of the shim, um, you know, because of course that valve stem keeps coming up closer to the cam. Um, but the lobe service limit is independent of that. It, you know, allowing yourself to have the right clearance is all fine and dandy, but you also need to let enough fuel and air mixture into the engine, and that's all about lobe diameter. So no matter what your clearance is within spec, um, you still need to push that valve down and open and let enough air and fuel in over uh, the amount of time. And so since these lobes are now shrunk, um, that valve isn't going to open as much and it is going to affect engine performance. Um, we'll see what I can do in, as far as finding a cam online. Uh, it'd be nice to find something that uh, is within the service spec and, and have an engine that's, well, breathing at 100%. So there's, there's my math logic on that cam that is below the service limit. Okay, so we're going to get ready to take the uh, cylinder head bolts and, and nuts off and pull that head off the top and uh, see what's happening inside there. And they've got an interesting uh, numbering system on this head. Uh, you'll see, where is it? 
here is a number one and then across over here is two it's in a bath of oil then three four where is five ah down below here five six seven eight nine ten so that's this one and this one nine and ten then way out here for eleven and twelve so you get the drift here is you're starting in the center and evenly going out from you know you're bouncing around like this but moving outward as you go and that's important to do it in descending order and then when you uh, put that head back on you'll go from one to 12. So I'm going to go from 12 down to 1 in that order. And then we also have two bolts here on either end. Uh, these are much smaller so they'll come out first and then we'll get to the main what I'll call head bolts. Um, now the service manual calls out that there are three of these. One, two, and a third one here somewhere. I cannot for the life of me find it. Um, I'm going to be very careful and make sure that uh, I'm looking as best I can, but even down within this cam chain channel, I see nothing. And uh, so we'll keep a close eye on that. I mean, I don't know why they would list it out in the service manual if it isn't there. And using a six-point socket, just in case you don't want to strip one of these out. So again, starting at number one, the other thing I should mention is I put some uh, penetrating oil in these. Oh, I've got a hard rubber thing here i got to pull out to get my socket on. Sorry. Okay, so I uh, put some penetrating oil on these rusty head nuts. Excuse me. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll start at one. All right, we got one loose. Over to two. Again, a six point socket. Shift things back. You know, an engine stand wouldn't be a crazy idea, but they can move around too, they're on wheels. I just like the height of this table. Four. Now, where's five? We got to be down, right down there. And after that, I need an extension. What do I do with it? Right here. Sorry. <laughs> Put my body against this to keep it from turning on me. Five, six is over here. Twist the engine. Seven is right next to that. Eight. here on the outside. That one I don't need the extension for, so. Ten. Eleven. 
this helpful that I keep counting? And 12. Now, uh, just recalled, uh, I was supposed to do those in descending order, and I went in ascending order. So I did it backwards. Don't do that. Descending order. Hopefully that doesn't cost me a whole head. I don't think it will, but uh, didn't do it right, so I'll call that out so you guys can learn from my mistake. So I haven't yet loosened up these uh, screws on the intake boots, and I thought I would just get those off now while they're still on the engine. These are JIS screws and they're on extremely tight. So an impact driver, I think I paid 15 bucks for this thing. It's Maybe it was 10, I don't know. They're not expensive if you go to the right place. Import tools, of course. But um, I figure all the impact is probably gonna be good for loosening up that head anyways. There we go, oops. That one I rounded off pretty good, so we're going to have to replace that screw. I never would have got that out by hand. Well, even with the impact uh, driver, I've still got one where we completely sheared out the, uh, well, the head on that screw. So we'll have to machine that off somehow. Um, Try it with a vice grip once I have the head off the engine, perhaps. We'll see. Look at that thing laying in there. Okay, so I've been wrapping on this front part here. It's a nice solid flat surface. And then back on the same part on the back, it's the uh, outside of the cam chain channel. Do not hammer on the fins. Um, rubber mallet or a plastic mallet, not something uh, heavier than that. And then keep your cam chain tied up and don't lose it. But uh, let's see if we can't lift this head off. Okay, so I've got some dowels, I think, that are still quite snug, one on this end, and I am ever so carefully, and I do mean carefully, putting that at a point in the metal where I have a lot of, uh, not on a fin, but the metal surrounding, here, why don't I show you. So I'm not going to pry you know, over here where these fins are loose, but here I've got a fair amount of metal built up and I can just do the slightest, most gentle pry right in there on the outside and you see how that's separating some. Um, out here on the fringe we're, uh, <laughs> we is stoned immaculate. Um, you know, I'm not going to damage that surface and, and lose a seal. It's more toward the inside that I'd be greatly concerned. So, just so you can see how I pried that carefully.
go. I'm off. And as I suspected, <laughs> let me get this put down first. Set this head down over here. Number one, two, three, and four. I wonder why I don't have compression in number four. <laughs> 